So here we are back on uh, YouTube. I almost backed out, guys. So uh, what are we working on today? So currently right now I'm in my 2,900 square foot house. Uh, I sourced all this stuff on Marketplace Craigslist. I cut some of this wood from our own property. Uh, the point is, it's not to boast about luxury or, ooh, look at me, what I got. It's to show you guys that, you know, sometimes you only got XYZ to work with. Uh, if I could afford a very nice vintage or 1800s 4x4 beam, um, yeah, I would love to have bought it, put it there instead of a great big log, you know. But um, the point is, you know, sometimes you only got so many XYZ dollars, uh, you really can't uh, go above and beyond or you have to work within the box that you got. So... Um, you know, with that said, uh, I kind of want the emphasization to be about that for this video, you know. Um, so we have our great big basement that's really messy. Um, you know, it's still filled with stuff I've sourced. And so moving past the basement, where are we going with that? Expanding, getting bigger. Uh, I call it my garage, but really it's just my eBay palace. Um, it was supposed to get done today, but my brother-in-law is kind of a brother-in-law um so yeah i was hoping to sheath all that and really hammer out ebay this week and get that all dried in get shelves built get organized um i got ebay sourcing stuff from everywhere from bubble wrap to here padded mail underneath there two ugly end tables from an estate a 1930s postal way scale that was a horrible buy turns out it was totally worth having and it's paid for itself you know i weigh everything on that um Yes, I do have other digital scales. 100-year-old scales are still accurate. I tried and true, man. Um, a bunch of books, you know, uh, consignment for family, broken laptop, first edition Dickinson that's privately mine. Uh, this was an awesome sourcing thing from Goodwill. It was eight bucks of religious denominations, 1868, first edition. Not a crazy popular one, uh, but, you know, an interesting book with comps of like 30 to 40 bucks in that condition, ripped, missing pages and stuff. Uh, you know, you need some 1870s uh, sarsaparilla botanic bottles. We got them. We, we, we put them everywhere. Um, a Leapster GS that was a horrible yard sale buy like a month ago so essentially is uh, I took the summer off just kind of enjoyed it with my family um, you know with COVID and everything going on and we had enough money kind of saved up or set aside that we could just kind of blow eBay off uh, I kind of let my listings go you know and I the garage was always kind of the end game or the warehouse eBay palace whatever you want to call it but um you know, it was just kind of, we'll do it later, we'll do it later, we'll do it later. Um, so, you know, it is whatever. Um, so there was way better ways to handle that instead of just letting all my listings go. But meanwhile, I was still sourcing because I love to shop. I love to buy things. Um, so I'm not really a hat person. This was a find yesterday. Um, we have the 5950 uh, NFL hats. They're brand new, but they're just in used condition they're unworn but they're dusty they're yard sale finds i paid a dollar a piece the comps on these are 25 to 30 bucks all day long i'm gonna put them at a 19.99 i think converse hat i think i listed for eight bucks it's pretty worn uh muck boots man these are an awesome find uh salvation army 4.99 uh i should have done a little better job cleaning up the shoe tutorial that i'm gonna do today it's kind of an impulse thing imagine that this was impulse um so i've been watching a lot of videos about people doing flips on shoes and stuff and i know shoes have i ever touched shoes here and there i've sold a few pairs of muck boots i understand muck boots i understand armani i understand gucci you know uh, new balance nike converse etc etc so why am i not selling them on ebay everyone else is <laughs> so this is kind of my try it lock. You know, there's nothing in here that was, everything was thrifted or sourced through thrift store. Um, uh, yard sale? No, no yard sale. Um, these are the knockoff Nike New Balance uh, made right here in Maine. Um, the Rev Light. I have a feeling I might eat it on these. They're size 13. I don't know. They're kind of, you know, the condition isn't really to my standards. The muck boots. Um, just sold these a few minutes ago the muck boots are awesome um i got these a couple weeks ago i think 
Um, these are the only thing I got like a couple weeks ago. I just sold them 50 bucks, which was super cheap. And I kind of, I don't know, I paid five or 10. And we're gonna cover like how I sell things and why I sell things and the way I sell things. We're gonna cover that through the next few videos and a little bit today. These were sluggers. Um, the comps on these were like 20, 30 bucks used kind of in that bracket. I wasn't crazy about them. These are Twisted X cowgirl boots, which the comps on these are awesome. They're like anywhere from 80 bucks to 100 bucks used. Um, these are pretty heavily used. I kind of thought maybe, I don't know what that, yeah, like stuff's kind of flaking off on them. I didn't note that. I listened for 45. I felt very solid about that. But um, an Erector set, yeah. Never go wrong with a 1956 Erector set, or 1954. Uh, it has the electric engine, I tested that. I'm not too familiar, so I kind of throw it out there on eBay, like, you know, I paid 10 bucks for it at a yard sale. Um, the comps on that are through the roof, as maybe some of you eBayers know. Um, but yeah, vintage L.L. Bean, you can never go wrong. Um, all my shoes essentially, uh, if they weren't like brand new Converse or the Adidas down here, uh, all my shoes were about five bucks. Um, so nice pair of Adidas, the Alpha Bounce. Um, really thought they looked pretty crappy kind of pair of shoes, but I looked up the model number and stuff and really looks like it would pay off. And the brand new size 14 Converse, the Chuck Taylor 2s, I think. Um, so yeah. Vintage Jello Bean, awesome. You can never go wrong with Vintage Jello Bean. This was kind of a, I didn't check it, kind of a com, uh, compulsion, you know. Um, it's five bucks, I paid 94 cents for it. You know, I still gotta pay for shipping. I do free shipping on everything and factor it into my price. So that way, you know, we can get to that conversation later. Um, so yeah, that was some of my finds yesterday. I'm already seeing a lot of my money back. I think I was, I was 80 bucks into everything, um, excluding the boots I bought a few weeks ago, the muck boots that just sold. Um, funny story, sterling silver candlesticks, I just declined an offer of 25 bucks. I paid 10 bucks for them. They will go first class, they're like a heavy 14 ounces. Um, those were like a couple weeks ago from an antique store, they were 10 bucks. I figured, hey, you know, for you newbies out there, it's sterling silver, and when you first pick up a sterling silver candle, stick you're like oh my gosh this is 10 ounces of silver uh you know no they're filled with resin so kind of keep that in mind even if you were to tear out all the resin it still has scrap value and i think they're usually right about an ounce ounce and a half so sterling's pretty high in the spectrum of purity i guess so you know even 30 bucks of scrap value i think for those candles wouldn't be too far-fetched um you know but um where you know that's pretty much the rundown of my sourcing i also also um got this ipod shuffle you know i thought they're obsolete and i paid 50 cents similar to this knockoff gopro with a broken case and it's called emerson i guess haven't checked the comps on that i don't think i'm going to be excited that much but i was excited about the ipad sh ipod shuffle uh, it's a second gen with its dock port so i thought you know definitely should be worth you know something i mean at least 50 cents or a dollar and uh i think i listed for a solid 20 they were selling for anywhere from 15 to closer to 30 which i was kind of blown away by um so everything i sourced yesterday was thrift stores i live in kind of a main you don't have to fight with ebayers you're not fighting with other people sourcing in a store once in a while you'll bump into another one like in a populated area like you know our capital augusta or portland or something but Everything is gravy, you know, um, if any of you guys just sit down and do the math of what we just went through, um, which I guess if my eBay palace were built, I would sit there, put you up on a wall, and we would break down the math. Um, but overall, yesterday, I think I'm about 70, I'm close to 80 bucks. Well, I did stop at two yard sales. So, I don't know, we did really good and um i will do better videos about my numbers and crunch you know that is what i want to show you guys but i sourced it all yard sales thrift stores but um you know oh oh i almost forgot you know i took a chance on this you know uh the privo i had never heard of them they looked really nice and they're really great condition so over here um 
Johnson Brothers, uh, about 1890s, 1880s. Um, that was four bucks at Salvation Army, which I thought was a heck of a deal. You know, I kind of check comps, and when you're doing antique uh, porcelain, it can get really confusing really quick. Um, so, yeah, all that porcelain down there and all that glassware and the Yahtzee game and all that is from an estate sale. So, again, can't emphasize enough, we have nonstop issues of space. So we really need this done. Um, there's a little murder dog. We love murder dog. Um, so, yeah, we got this awesome painting from a, an estate sale. Um, it's been selling for about a thousand bucks. It's like a commemorative, you know, uh, snow wintry scene or whatever. Um, I can't think of the name of it, but so going back to our other sourcing thing, I really want to talk about. Um, so, you know, everyone's got the thrift stores, everyone's got the yard sales. Everyone knows this. It's, it's nothing new. And, uh, you know, teaching you guys something, or maybe something you can learn from my videos, Yard sales and thrift stores are nothing new. <clears throat> what I talked about in my first video is I sell car parts. All right, this right now sells on eBay for $14. Uh, comes out of a 2000 Suburban. and it has a various fitting year. Um, you flip on the back, it's got a barcode and it's got a number. It's as simple as that. Um, you know, and these are hot selling items. Everything I list sells, you know, it sells fast within a week and my pricing reflects that i my philosophy has been move volume um not so much high high prices and sit there and wait you know i can move 10 of these versus what the other guy's asking i think he's asking like most power sellers are asking 40 bucks for them and i'm getting them used you know and i'm paying 50 cents to a dollar for them um, you know, sometimes I pay a little more, sometimes I pay a little less, all depends on where I source and we're going to get to that. Um, you know, and those are hot items. I can sell 10 of those in a day. Like, you know, they sell so freaking fast. Um, you know, another huge one, Chevy Silverado suburban gauge clusters from first gen, um, LS engines, always burning out, illuminating issues. Those are guaranteed 50 to a hundred bucks. So you know, whether you're sourcing on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, uh, I personally go to two local junkyards I have around here. We have kind of an arrangement um, and I make a killing on car parts. But I'm gonna have to be honest, some days I don't wanna wake up and grab all my tools and go just get covered in grease out in the hot sun. I wanna sit back and drink my McDonald's coffee and go to a thrift store and walk around like a normal human being instead of, you know, loading my car full. Of, I mean, is the money there? like? Oh gosh, I've made so much money on car parts. It's it's insane, you know. Not everything's gravy, but I really focus on hot selling items. I go to a junkyard. I picked up this bad boy. Um, I listed it as untested. I don't have a battery. I found it at a junkyard. You know, it's a M12. It sells the comps on this used are like 40, 50 bucks. I listed it for 20 bucks. I paid a dollar maybe, two dollars for it. You know, it's as is, where is. I have no idea. Um, you know. That's how good, you know, uh, junkyards have treated me. Um, I sell a lot of chainsaw, a lot of chainsaw parts. Um, I make really good money on that stuff. So maybe it's another avenue for you guys to think about. Um, you know, I get everyone who's watching this in different locations of the world. And, you know, you'll be like, hey, Ben, I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. How is building an eBay palace going to work for me? I got a 10 by 10 yard. You know, I get it. I've worked with those small area spaces and I've worked up to where I am right now. Um, I worked out of my mom's second story house that, you know, uh, you know, kind of tucking things in underneath the eaves and stuff. I've worked in basements um, at other houses years ago that were horrible. Um, I've worked in my own basement and expanded a lot more to where we are right now. So, you know, and maybe you have similar questions where you're like, so Ben, I live in Tampa, Florida. There's no junkyards around me. Um, these are just a few ideas, you know, for you guys to throw out, maybe look on Craigslist, Facebook. Um, I'm just showing you guys kind of like what works for me. Maybe some guy in Nevada can kind of take something away from this. I'm, I'm not quite sure, you know. Uh, there's other means instead of just going to a junkyard. Um, there's a lot of local towns, uh, maybe rural areas that have um, dumps, you know, where you bring your landfill. And a lot of those... Um, that I have been to like in Denver. Um, I've been to a lot 
um, in Maine, New Hampshire, they are, we're all kind of recycling mindsets. So we set things off to the side. They might have a 1980s Toshiba mixer over there in the corner. You know, it's worth 200 bucks. And they're like, yeah, take it. You know, does it work? We don't know. You know, there's a lot of those kind of atmosphere in small rural areas, you know, with town landfills. Don't, you know, don't shy away from those. There's plenty of YouTuber eBayers who are like, yeah, we pick up things alongside the road. Um, and we're going to cover that um, later on in the future. I'm so excited for the future because I finally made up my mind. You know, I'm going to talk about this stuff. I'm going to talk about what I'm doing. Maybe you guys can learn from it. I'm going to say that a million times. You know, um, going back to the lady in Tampa who doesn't have a junkyard, um, maybe there's other options like commercial junkyards like Kenny Upol. There's a lot of high-end Mercedes BMW parts that are selling for two, three hundred dollars that the lady behind, you know, the desk at uh, Kenny Upol isn't going to know the difference, you know, between XYZ part and XYZ part, you know, and it's still eighteen ninety nine. Now, if you were to source, you know, let's say my temperature control unit from a two thousand one Suburban at a Kenny Upol, it's not going to be worth it. But if you can find, let's say, uh, two thousand fifteen sensor out of a Mercedes. SL 500, you know, or okay, that's crazy to find in a junkyard. But um, if you were to find some rare sensor that you could see consistently sells, like an EGR valve actually on a 2006 uh, Equinox, uh, EGR valve used sells on eBay for almost 200 ish dollars, 150 right around there. Uh, there was a time when they were selling like that. So if you were to go to Kenny Upol and pay them 15 bucks and they have, I don't know, like 10 of those cars all lined up, there you go. There's an idea. Um, Again, just relaying what works for me might not work for you guys. So um, just a quick video. I want to get outside and start working on my garage, uh, eBay Palace, <laughs> get this stuff out of my house and organized. All right, some point we're going to cover a system. So uh, here to make you laugh, make you cry and say, what the heck in heck? You're going to the junkyard and selling stuff on eBay? That's crazy, Ben. Nobody does that. <laughs>